Yo, what is going on, you banana eating ball toys? Today, we're going to be playing some games with the Control Zoark list from Denver. Um, just made it back from Denver Regionals myself. This is the list I played and the list that Caleb Gedemir managed to take the whole the whole tournament down with. Um, Getting another dub for the gang. Uh, anyways, yeah, let's get into the list. So, it is a. I call it Control Zoark because it does have that aspect to it, but it's not fully a Control Zoark deck. Um, it was really just crafted. Um, and shout out to Jimmy Pendarvish, the originator of the the original list and kind of the whole concept of the deck to begin with. Um, so big shout out to Jimmy pulling it through for the squad and uh, <laughs> giving us another unique deck to play at a, another major tournament. Um, but yeah, let's get into the list itself. Um, so it's it's built to be able to handle different matchups um, with cards. Um, so you got the Crushing Hammers and the Enhanced Hammers in here pretty much for Zorak Mirrors. You can use them against Pikaram and Zapdos decks as well, the Crushing Hammer, sometimes Enhanced Hammer. Um, but generally in those matchups, you're just going to be attacking. Uh, you have the Dumbbells in here for the Zapdos and the Pikaram matchup, so you can just attack and not be really worried about getting knocked out. Um, uh, or making it harder for your opponent to get to the knockout, I guess is what I should say. And they get the 2-2 two -two Muck line in here, as along with 2 Mysterious Treasure, to really aggressively get out the Muck and slow your opponent completely down. Um... Then you have the two Orangaroos in here, like I said. It's not like completely a control deck, but you have that as like an option. The Orangaroos are really in here for the um, Zoro Rock matchup, or pretty much any matchup against Zoro Rock. Um, your main game plan is to kind of run them out of energy. Um, so being able to recover Crushing Hammer and Enhanced Hammer is uh, what you look to do in uh, those matchups, or that matchup, the Zoro matchups, those matchups, that matchup. Well, it's the same thing. Uh, yeah, use the Crushing Hammers, the Enhanced Hammers, run them out of energy, or ideally that's like the game plan. Um, and then you attack with Zoro when you want to. Um, I played against three Zoro Rock Mirrors in Denver. I managed to beat all of them. Uh, I would win game one, and then game two I would just play to, like, not allow them to attack. I'd win game th one through drawing prizes, and then game two I would just be like, well, I'm just going to resource management and keep removing your energy. Um, and then uh, they eventually got to the point where they usually just scooped because they realized there was no way for them to uh, win the game. The Picaron matchup um, you use through using uh, Riotus Beating or Energy Drive to two-shot Picaroms, and then you have Dumbbells for your Zoroks to make it hard for the Picaroms to actually one-shot Zoroks with Full Blitz or uh, even the, the Tag Bolt GX. So that's your game plan against the Picarom. It's really all in the Fighting Fury Belts and setting up the Muck, making it hard for your opponent to actually, um, you know, set up efficiently. You know, they can't use their Lele, their Let Looses, um, or their Jirachi. They'll usually get like one, maybe two turns if they go first of them. Um, but past that, you shut them off, you know, make it really hard for your opponent to keep up. Uh, got the two Judge in here, specifically pretty much for the Zapdos and Picaron matchups. You want to be able to, because um, their game plan is to, like, play a Lily turn one and then build on their hand from there with Stellar Witches and Volkners and such. Uh, so you really want to, like, take away their hand, judge them, set up Muck, hit them with a the Judge, disrupt their hand, um, and then just keep swinging on them with Zork uh, and Lele against Picaron and Zapdos. Usually you're only using Zork against the... Uh, uh, Zapdos matchups, uh, Lele use actually quite often against the Picaram. If you put it in play, you don't want it to just sit on the bench to get Tag Bolt sniped, so you want to use it a little bit more aggressively and make them attack into it to knock it out. Um, don't want them to go like Tag Bolt, knock out a Zorak, and knock out a Lele off the bench. So you're usually attacking with Lele. If Lele makes it onto its bench in the P against Picaram, you're usually looking to attack with it into a Picaram. Um, and yeah, that's kind of all I got to say on the list. I think the deck is super good right now, um, as long as the meta doesn't shift too much. I mean, Zorak decks can add their own Orangaroo, and then that makes the matchup really really iffy. I think it probably becomes favored for like a Zoro Rock build if they play their own Orangaroo uh, and know what to do efficiently with it. Oh, I guess I didn't touch on gir the Giraffe too much yet. The Giraffe's in here uh, for like awkward situations. I use it, like it's specifically good against Ultra Necrozma, um, but against like uh, other control decks, um, like Caleb used in the finals against a control Hoopa Gigas deck um, using Get Lost to get rid of important cards like Lusamines, Fava, stuff like that. So, uh, Draft Rug really has, is in here for a lot of uses. You can use them in a lot of different ways. My favorite play with it that I wasn't able to pull off in the tournament, unfortunately, is when your Zorak opponent uses both their Guzmas. Once you know they only play the two Guzma, you Guzma something up and Draft Wave both their Guzmas before they can pal pad, pal pad them back. So, that's like my favorite play potential play with the giraffe i wasn't able to pull it off in the tournament itself but uh, yeah there's a lot of cute little situations that you can use the giraffe in um where it becomes useful so definitely worth worth playing i think um but yeah that's the list oh i guess i could touch on lavender town real fast so lavender town is in here so you can check your opponent's hand constantly when you're using going through like a control strategy and you know exactly what they'll have access to on their next turn so you know if you want to judge them again um or if you want to go into a starting to attack with riotous beating or if you should just stick and keep using resource management so that's why the lavender town is there you can get it back endlessly with the resource management so there's only one um 
we played the Champions Festival uh, to help against potential, pretty much a Shrine, like uh, Buzz, or Zapdos decks with Heavy Shrine, um, get a little bit of extra healing, healing, healing to help deal with that Shrine damage that potentially comes down. So that's the point of the Champions Festival in here. But you could just cut it for a second, second Lavender Town. I would definitely play a Lavender Town though. Super useful um, to be able to check your opponent's hand and then kind of choose which game plan you want to go down. Like. If, their hand is just dead um, and you, you just want to start taking knockouts you go into the riotous beating if their hand is very much alive and you need more cards to be able to deal with what they're going to throw down the next turn then you just stay and keep going in with the resource management um, but yeah and then them checking your hand really doesn't do anything because uh, you have access to your whole deck at all times so uh, the only thing it would potentially tell them is whether or not you play certain cards but uh, not really relevant you pretty much always have like a guzma or an ace Arola or crushing hammer so them seeing your hand really doesn't affect anything you seeing their hand is a big deal though so that's why uh, we do play the lavender town in here all right that's gonna do it for the list now let's go ahead and get into some games to our first game here we're up against a malamar deck malamar can be pretty tough for a pretty tough matchup um hmm i think the um, hmm Treasure. Uh, uh, I kind of want to keep the crushing hammer. I might get rid of the Zorak here. No, I'm definitely getting rid of the crushing hammer. Already rethought it. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be that Lele for that Lily. Um, yeah. So the big players in this matchup uh, is the Giraffe, which is prized. All right. So it's gonna be crushing hammers can also be a pretty big deal in this matchup, which we're gonna try and look to utilize as well. Um, eh, Muck is pretty cool too. Depends what kind of Malamar our opponent is playing. That's also a big deal. It's like a spread Malamar. Kind of just went through like Acerola plus getting them back with Orangaroo. There he is. Gonna go ahead. There's the switch. So that's like a really big pull there, actually. Um, and we got them. We got everything going on for our, our following turn. Um, I think Orangaroo will make his way to the bench here. Just in case we get let loose, I'd rather have him in play. Do I also want to play the switch card? I guess is kind of the question now. I kind of do, actually. If we, once again, getting let loose, I would rather just have this Ditto in the active, ready to become a Zoark. Um, pretty good chance of drawing a Zorark, even if we get let loose. So yeah, I like this a little bit better, yeah. This sounds good to me. There's an Acrobike from our opponent, so it's a pretty aggressive Malamar build, that's for sure. You don't see Acrobike all the time anymore. There's a Spell Tag. So I think it is probably a Giratina. It's either a Spread build or just like a Giratina. Straight up attacking with Giratina build. Um, we'll see. There's a Shrine, so we gotta deal with that now. No one likes dealing with Shrine. Um, but yeah, we should be able to win this one just through... Using Ace Arola a lot. Um, default into a Rangaroo at some point. There's an Erica's for five from our opponent. Yeah, so I'm feeling I'm feeling pretty good about this one. There's a Jirachi as well, making it, away, making it down for our opponent. All right, they got a pretty good start. All right, they got a pretty good one here. Um, so yeah, like I said, Giraffe is pretty good in this matchup. Um, but I think us just playing the game is also pretty good. Going to be pretty good in this matchup. Because we're going to be able to use Muck, shot off the Giratina, so then we're just going to look to Ace Arola a lot from there. And can also get back into a Rangaroo and then just Ace Arola. Get more Ace Rollers with the Oranguru. Um, unfortunately, we are going to judge our opponent. Um, which doesn't feel great. Oops, got to put this guy down first. Doesn't feel great when um, they really don't have anything going on. So I'm like debating trading first, but I don't want to trade any of this. I think we're just going to go ahead and throw the judge out. <clears throat> Alright, another Zork. Going to trade the communication, I think. How many energy are in here? Two. We'll probably go for the Crushing Hammer. Um, evolve. Gonna trade the judge. I really would like a way to remove the shrine. Let's see if we can find it. Not quite. Nest ball. Get ourselves another Zeru to become a Zork on the following turn. And then, like I said, I'm gonna go for that crushing hammer. Potentially. Nope. Never mind. Oh, I didn't even get a DCE. I thought I had a DCE for some reason. I was like, all right, we're just gonna ready to go. At least we're gonna get to attack. Nope. Not quite. Um, so a little bit behind here. Uh, Whiff on the Crushing Hammer as well. Very likely our opponent is going to attack us this turn. And then we'll ideally want a Lily or an Ace Arola plus DC as a response. Um, but I guess we might just have to go with Lily. Our hand is not looking great. There's the Guzma, so I assume our Muck is going down here. Yep, goodbye, Muck. I mean, you, you did what you could, which wasn't quite enough, though. All right. <clears throat> so, yeah, would have definitely been nice to get the, crush get the Crushing Hammer there. Probably would have prevented our opponent from being able to actually attack this turn. Um, so now we're definitely committing to the Lily for the turn. Uh, another Grimer would be nice. Uh, got a lot of other things that would be cool as well. Go ahead, start trading, get rid of the E-Hammer. Yeah, looking for the Grimer this time. All right, Nest Ball. I don't know if he's in here, actually. He is great. Uh, Stretcher is also in there, which is also pretty cool. Um, get rid of an Orangaroo here, because we do have the Stretcher. We can make another trade if we have to, but I'm hoping for a DCE draw. 
coming up soon. All right, we have Ace of Rolls, so Ace of Rolls is definitely our supporter of choice on the next turn, so we're going to get rid of the Lily here. <clears throat> no DC. All right, got another Crushing Hammer. Tails again. All right, you know what? This is fine. I'm I'm only slightly discouraged by this. Um, all right, pass back over to our opponent. I actually don't know how many DC or prize. I'm assuming at least one at this point is probably prized. As I say that, I'm probably going to trade into like four of them on my next turn, which is great. I'd love to see it. Uh, we'll see here, though, just in just a second. <clears throat> we're going to get hit by this Giratina. We have the Ace Arola as a response. Hopefully, we can get the stretcher, get that muck out there, which would be fantastic. Shut off this Giratina. Shut off this Jirachi. Um, no idea what they grabbed. I think it was a Malamar, actually. Nope, another Giratina. Nope, wasn't Malamar. All right. So, they're going to attack us. Um... It looks like they're betting on us just not getting muck here. Because um, they're running out of... Yeah, they're just kind of betting on us not getting muck. Oh, no, they'll still be set up a Giratina. But then they'll lose... They'll be done after that Giratina. Yeah, so that's not like a super good strategy for my opponent, I don't think. All right, we got the Acerola. Got pretty much everything we need. And going into the trading now. And get rid of Lily. Might keep the Ultra Ball because I maybe want to stretch it for the whole line that we got going on in the discard pile right now. No, we're straight away Ultra Ball. All right, come on. I need a DCE. Just, there we go. Just one time. Got the Champions Festival as well. I want to keep the dumbbells. I'm going to trade away this Arua here. Last thing we would want here is the Stretcher. No such luck. Uh, Champions Festival comes down, though, which is pretty cool. It's a pretty cool card. Heal up the squad. Protect this guy. Pick up this guy. Um, go Zorark. Bench Ditto. DCE. And then... Oh, no! Oh no, he's going to be able to kill my ditto with the uh, spell tag. Well, I only messed up a little bit there. Alright, they're going to get a free prize on our ditto because I benched ditto when I should have uh, just not benched anything, actually, to be honest. Should have just not benched anything. Yep, goodbye ditto. Our opponent's going to grab a free prize card here because uh, of my uh, mistake. Alright, <clears throat> so still our opponent has nothing going on besides... Um, this Jirachi plus now a prize card, so it gets worse. Um, uh, it's getting worse now. I can't believe I did that. That was so bad. I should just not have benched it. I should have nest balled for a Zerua. Um, if there was any left, I'm not sure. Would have been fine to check though, or just kept that Zerua knowing that was gonna happen. There's a Cynthia off the cellar, which so our opponent very much back in the game. Um, yeah, we're not held uh, out for too long. So we're looking at Ace Arola once again. Like I said, we're gonna be using Ace Arola a lot, um, and then also. Get another Zeru in play. And find that muck, hopefully. Hopefully find that muck. There's another shrine from our opponent. That kind of stinks. We need to be able to get rid of that. Might make our way into a Ranguru here in a bit. Get back like the Champions Festival plus more Ace Arolas. <clears throat> Definitely like a reasonable play to make. Uh, we still have a Field Blower and a what's it called left though? Field Blower and a Lavender Town. So still have plenty of ways to remove the shrine with how few cards we have left in deck. Did not check my prizes, though, so I don't know if one of those is a prize or not. All right, they have a lot of Giratina set up now. All right, yeah. So this one might be coming closer than it should be just because I uh, gave them that free Ditto prize. Um, but I guess we're just playing the game on hard mode. Uh, there's another spell tag, so don't bench Ditto again. Uh, thankfully, I can't bench Ditto again, I guess is what I should say, because you can only play one Ditto. So thankfully, I uh, can't make that same mistake. There's an enhanced hammer top tech, so let's start with the Nest Ball. All right, there was no Zerua the whole time, so I guess I didn't mess up as bad. Uh, well, no, it's still a pretty big mess up. I'm not going to try and... So we could go with the Stretcher for three, and then Treasure for the Mach, which I think I like better. So let's do that now. Three pokes. Let's get a Muck. Let's get these three. I like those three, I think. And then let's trade away Zorark. One, two. Um, treasure away the Ultra Ball. Gonna go grab ourselves a Muck. Uh, Ace of Roller, this guy. Send up the fresh Zorark. Go Zorark. And Sarua. Dumbbells. DCE. Muck. And then Riot is beating for the knockout. They get to use another. What's it called? <clears throat> Spell tag. But I don't think I'm going to be able to get a knockout this turn. But I guess I could be wrong. Um, could definitely say, see something like the Larvitar come into play here and take a knockout on our Zork, Which would kind of stink. Um, we, wouldn't, we, have quite, we wouldn't quite lose the game yet. But 
yeah, we'll see what they end up going with. The Lele on the bench is kind of always a sitting duck looking to be knocked out. So that's something we need to take care of. I probably should have pal padded for two ways to roll the last turn, actually. Get those back in the deck so I have a bit better chance to top deck them on the next turn. Another mistake from me. But at this point, I don't think any of us are surprised. There we go. There's that spell tag damage. We get a prize card. So even up the prize cards here, Azarua is a great prize card to pull here. Set up another Zorak potentially on the following turn. I think I will look to go into a Ranguru on the next turn, though. I almost want to, like, Guzma the Ranguru into the active, but then I this guy is just going to get stay and play damage. So I probably don't want to do that. I probably want to go with Acerola this, go into a Ranguru. Probably the most ideal way to go. And then we had a Ranguru back. Uh, Palpad, an Acerola, hopefully, and then the Champions Festival. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan to me. There's an Ultra Ball from our opponent. Grabs a... Oh, well, maybe now we just want to take the knockout on this Garatina, though, actually. Well, there's another Garatina. All right, so we have to get through two more Garatinas, but their hand is currently dead. So I think we should probably just look to Palpat for Acerolas, hopefully trade into an Acerola, and then if we whiff, we goose him up the Malamar, and then a resource management. But if we hit a Acerola, then we go Acerola, just knock out. Because we need to get through two more Garatinas, and then they're kind of just like out of gas after that, it looks like. So, yeah, that's the plan then. So, should have done this last turn. Increasing my chance of finding an extra roll a little bit because I could top deck one. Um, but whatever, not that big of a deal. Got the field blower. Great card to find. Trade away the ultra ball. Grab ourselves Acerola. So, we're good to go on the Acerola. Acerola, this guy. Get him back to the hand. Send up this guy. This guy comes down. Dumbbells come down. Field blower. Get rid of this and this. Boom, boom. And attach DCE. And right is beating for the knockout. All right. <clears throat> and then now we're one Acer roll away from running our opponent out of attackers currently in play. Doesn't mean they can't still, like, top deck something to get more attackers in play. They actually can't attack this turn because I got rid of the skateboard as well because they don't have an energy for this guy. So they go ahead and send him out and, like, well, let's see if we can get energy. They don't get an energy. All right. Despite... Um, some massive mistakes on my end. We're still able to close that one out, and that's just kind of because I think that matchup is just that good. Um, our opponent really doesn't have a great way to deal. Like, even if they play Larvitar, the Dumbbells gets the HP a little bit too high, I think, for Larvitar to ever really get to the numbers as long as you're Acer rolling and using Champions Festival. So, yeah, pretty easy matchup when we draw cards and don't misplay too much. I misplayed a little bit, but I don't think I misplayed quite too much. So we're still able to take the dub there. Let's do another one here. Super good start. <laughs> quite literally have everything we could ever want i think um, we'll see what we're playing up against and then kind of pick our strategy from there might actually be a fire deck Oof! it is blacephalon so blacephalon's a pretty tough matchup but not unwinnable uh we need a rangaroo we also want to set up huh ditto's pretty good Zerua, I'm going to Ultra Ball away these two. Grab ourselves another Zerua, I think. So yeah, the whole, this whole matchup is just kind of crushing hammers. And then go from there. There's a crushing hammer. Might want to get out a Lele next turn. So I don't want to play anything else down, I don't think. Could put a Dumbbells on a Zerua, I guess, on the bench. And then pass over to our opponent. Let's see what they got. Yeah, this whole matchup is going to be keeping the energy off of the Blacephalon and then sometimes giraffing it into the Lost Zone if they put too much into their discard pile. Um, Would have been nice to get a DC attachment on the Orangaroo so we could potentially retreat a Zerua into the Orangaroo on the following turn. But oh well, can't have it all sometimes. And we'll probably look to set up Muck to cut off stuff like our opponent's Let Looses and Leles and stuff like that as they treasure away a fire. Poipole this time, not going to be a let loose, so that's fine with me. Yeah, so that's our that's our game plan. This matchup is rough, but definitely, like I said, definitely beatable. Just kind of rough. Just kind of rough. All right. So we want to draw quite a few cards here. There's Lele. It's going to be, like I said, Lele for Lily here. For Lily can also Ultra Ball away the Field Blower and the Champions Festival, I think, and get a Zorark. Yeah, Field Blower, Champions Festival, grab a Zorark. Yeah, then we got that Crushing Hammer, got the Muck. Oh god, I guess it should have taken a little bit longer to look at my deck. 
I mean, if I have the switch, I have the switch in there so we can get into the Oranguru this turn, which would be great, but um, it's really not that big of a deal if I know or not. And then, yeah, Lily for six. Start with trading now. Trade away. I guess we'll just go ahead and hit this Blacephalon for 120. No reason for us really not to pop this thing in the mouth. So we may as well pop him for 120. Just looking for crushing hammers really here. Um, yeah, I see no reason not to go ahead and punch this guy for 120. So we're gonna go ahead and punch him for 120. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. They might go ahead and bursting burn us, which means we can just ace roll the next turn, get into the Oranguru finally, and start getting back these crushing hammers. We have to find the other crushing hammers as well. We might actually Lily instead to dig a little bit deeper. We need to see a fine crushing hammers, like I said. Whole matchup is about keeping fire energy off of the Blacephalon. That's all we're trying to do. Keep the energy away from Blacephalon, and then go from there. Um, there's a charging up. And then also, whenever we can get into the... We, so we maybe want to Acer roll this just so we can have access to Giraffe on the bench. Um, because using what's it called as well is pretty good. Get Lost. Get Lost is pretty good in this matchup, yeah. So we might look to try and set up a Get Lost instead. We'll see. There's a Guzma from our opponent bringing up our muck. So that means we're going to want to find a Guzma of our own. Get this Oranguru into the active. At the very least, find some Crushing Hammers. So we're going to start with trading on this one then. Guzma up their muck is actually pretty good. Trapping their muck in the active. It's very hard for them to move muck. And then we can set up our Lost Zone shenanigan plays. We do need to like make bench space for the uh, Oranguru or the Giraffe. I guess we don't have to. Like if they don't keep putting energy on. Yeah, yeah, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Ideally, they KO something eventually, and then we have room for Giraffe, I guess, is going to be the strategy. Taking their time here, thinking about this one. They got one energy on the Blacephalon, but that's about it. They can get back another energy with the charging up next turn. They don't have much else besides that. We could just go Guzma knock this thing out with... Okay, now they are coming up and actually going to Bursting Burn this. So this is actually 100% fine with me. Um, we don't really need Muck in play once we get the Zorox established. And now we can get into the Oranguru and get Crushing Hammers back. So that's like... Almost better, but now we got the Guzma. Now I'm just kind of torn. We're gonna trade first now. I might. I think I just want to bring up their muck here, actually, while I have the chance. There's a crushing hammer as well. Mm, that's a tails. Trade away Grimer. Could Ace Arola though in resource management, but I think the Guzma is a little bit more devastating. There's a Lavender Town. Let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, they have a Guzma, but I don't really care if they have a Guzma. Make them use the Guzma. I think is actually just the best way to go here. And then we're going to resource management. We're going to get back Crushing Crushing and Guzma, I think, because we haven't found Palpad yet. But we could potentially find ways to shuffle up our deck, get that Guzma to the top, and then keep bringing this Muck back to the active. Um, yep, and that's going to be our game plan. Hopefully they go attach here, Guzma knock out our Muck, then we have a bench space open for our Giraffe. Um, and then we can start going plays of, like, double Crushing Hammer heads, and then... Or we keep using Crushing Hammers until we get, like, double heads, and then we just lost Zone away to Fire Energy on that turn. Um, so that's kind of how the, the matchup plays out. That's our game plan, is to do that. Um, yeah, they have a Beast Ring in hand. They have Beast Ring, Guzma, Fire, I think. And now they got a new top deck there. Um, and it's okay if they see our hand, because uh, we have trade, so we can potentially always just kind of draw into anything we'd want anyways. So it's really not that big of a deal if they see our hand at all. There's the charging up. Yeah, so I expect them to go with... They might hold off on the Guzma here, thinking, um, well, I'd rather get, like, two prizes off of the Guzma. So that would be pretty reasonable from our opponent to be like, well, I hope they don't crushing hammer the energy off the Blacephalon this turn. And Guzma knock out the Lele on the next turn after another charging up plus the attachment. Nope, but they're going to be aggressive with the Guzma here. So I'm pretty sure Muck's getting knocked out here. I expect attach from hand. And then uh, the uh, Mind Blown, one off the active, one off the bench, leaving one on the Blacephalon. That kind of makes most sense to me. And then we're going to look to Guzma, the Muck, back into the active. We might not get there, so we're just going to set up a Ranguru initially. Because at the very least, if we just find Crushing Hammers, we can at least just uh, crush some of these energies away. And then we can Guzma retreat this Zork if we do get the Guzma. We won't get to see. Oh, so going all the energy off the active. Interesting. Okay. So maybe we could just KO this Blacephalon. We'll see what our, our opponent's hand looks like off of the Lavender Town. Hmm. We could just go knockout active here. Let's start with trades. Trade away Judge. Oops. Ah, oh, no, keeping one of Hand Hammer is fine. I was going to say, shouldn't have got rid of the Hand Hammer. There's the Giraffe. We do have the opening for it now. Trade away Judge here. I kind of just want to go ahead and just swing into the Blacephalon because it's very unlikely that they'd be able to recover super aggressively. Yeah, I kind of like it. Let's just do it. Uh, right is beating Knockout. Not going to bench anything else yet. We know their hand is dead, and that's kind of the point of the Lavender Town. 
Opponent's hand is dead, right? It's beating if your opponent's hand's not dead. Sit there and resource management until you judge them into a dead hand. Um, you have so much time with uh, the way that I can kind of control the pace of the game that, uh, yeah, you don't really need to do too much. There's a sad face from our opponent, so I think we have them locked out currently. Uh, they have their own muck in play, too. I actually was like, well, I guess they could let loose or Lele, but they, they have their own muck, so they can't do either of those. All they can do this turn is turning point for 60, which is not very good, uh, if you ask me. So that's fine with me. And then we're going to two-shot this Naganadel, out, or we could go Guzma Knockout, Guzma Knockout, and then turn them, uh, more aggressively turn them off, turn off the B-Strings. Um, I think just knocking out this Naganadel, mm, I don't know, it depends if we find the Guzma, I guess. Guzma Knockout Ditto, and then Guzma Knockout Muck sounds pretty good, actually, because it would make sure they don't get uh, B-Strings. Um, yeah, so I think I like the idea of Guzma Knockout, Guzma Knockout. Oh, they're just going to feed us the Ditto, so this is even better for us, I think. We're definitely just going to try and KO that. Hold on to the Crushing Hammers. I'm going to get rid of an Orangaroo here. Keep the Giraffe. Could have got rid of Acerola, I guess, maybe. Um, that's what I wanted was a potentially another Zork. Trade that. We've tried it for the other Orangaroo, so it's kind of like fine uh, in that aspect. Going to make these guys all beefy. There's a Fire Energy. Don't care about it. Rightus Beating, knock out this Ditto. And then we're looking for Rightus Beating, knock out the Muck. And then turn off B String from our opponent. And then uh, should just win the game from there. We got two crushing hammers in hand, so we can dig pretty deep, or we can have a decent about a decent amount of energy removal on our next turn. We can draw our whole deck if we want, and then just remove a lot of energy from play. There's the Blacephalon top deck with a fire energy. They're probably just going to go with a bursting burn here, if I had to guess. And then we'll go ahead and go Guzma knockout Muck, as well as trying to remove this energy off the Blacephalon, uh, fully trying to limit our opponent's uh, potential attacks next turn. Could also just go. Hit Blacephalon. Nah, we should turn off the, uh... I don't think there's a reason not to turn off the Muck. We should definitely turn off... Or not, turn off the Beast Rings. That's what we should definitely do, I think. Kind of want to know what's in the deck. Hang on, let's trade this. I'm just going to go ahead and communication. Go to this. I just want to know what's in the deck left. Two Crushing, Goose. Okay. Pretty good cards left. All four Crushing Hammers. Pretty nice to have. Gotta get rid of that Fire. For sure have that last DCE, which is also important to take note of. Um, put the draft down. Make sure we have space for that. And then right is beating it. Knock out this muck. And we're in a pretty good spot. Down to two prizes. They no longer have access to B-String, which is pretty good. So we're just going to look to two-shot this Blacephalon and close out the game. They could knock out the Zork this turn with an energy switch plus attach. But they'd have to first top deck a draw supporter. Uh, cause, or I guess they could top deck a Let Loose or a Lele, but Treasure and Ultra Ball are out of the question because they have no cards in hand, so there's nothing for them to actually, like, Ultra Ball or Treasure away to find anything, so I think we're close to being able to just close this one out here, just back-to-back -back Guzmas. We know we have a Guzma left in the deck, um, so we can trade into that for sure, Guzma, punch this, and then Palpat for two more Guzmas next turn or something like that, and then punch it again. So, it's pretty much all locked up. There's a retreat. It's gonna hit us with a Bursting Burn. So we'll probably respond with a hard retreat into a different Zorark. Save the switch. I like the idea of saving the switch in the last DCE. Yeah. That's the Bursting Burn. That's, yeah, I think I'll just go with the hard retreat. I kind of want to save the switch. I like the idea of that. Go with the crushing hammers. There's another heads. <laughs> Get rid of that energy off the Blacephalon. And then we're gonna go ahead and punch him for 120. And then I think that's about gonna punch our ticket to victory as well here. Have the Guzma. There's one Guzma in deck. And even if I for some reason did not see what I thought I saw, Palpad for Guzma. Um, they can knock us out with attach plus E switch plus the recharge. But uh, we do just have a follow-up Zork to knock out this Blacephalon. So they need like a Max Potion or something, I guess, alongside everything else they got going on. Um, there go the Beast Rings. Uh, probably going to look for a Let Loose here. If I had to guess, just dropped our hand. Make it hard for us to potentially draw into um, one more DCE or our last DCE. And then kind of force us to uh, go through the confusion. Yep, there's a Let Loose. Was in the hand the whole time, I guess. I don't know why they didn't go ahead and grab a Poipul there. So yeah, the one thing they can do is Bursting Burn us, and if we don't find the DC, which we just found, then uh, it's possible we'd have to go through the Confusion Flip, hit Tails, and then not be able to knock out the Blacephalon for a turn, which might give our opponent enough time to come back in the game. I don't think it would. I think we'd still eventually just knock this thing out. Yeah, I don't think that would actually ever give them enough time. I take it back. 
Nothing bad was ever happening. There we go. Another, uh, what was it? Charging up and then pass over to us. And then we got the Riders beating for the knockout. And that's going to do it on uh, the video for the Control Zork deck, you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, be sure to give the video a like. If you're enjoying the content, be sure to subscribe. Um, leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. Um, links in the description for my Twitch live stream as well as social media links. Be sure to follow that fun stuff. Have a good day. Thanks for watching and peace.